Hey, everybody, my name is Jamie, and if this is your first time watching the channel, I have a van life, bus life channel I've been running on YouTube since 2015. I've been out here for about 10 years, living in a bus now, started in a van, and the kind of content is kind of like day-to-day vlog stuff but also i hold van build festivals where everybody pulls in and builds rigs you know helps people get their solar installed and fans installed a lot of volunteers a lot of volunteers watching right now pitch in and do an absolutely wonderful professional job and everybody has a good time i also interview people and uh show their rigs and talk to them a little bit about what uh inspired them to strike out in the uh traveling lifestyle and sometimes i'll crowdfund a rig and we all pull together to build it out, get all of the amenities and accessories together to install it with, and give it away. No strings attached to somebody that we deem uh, had it coming. So that's what you can expect on the channel. If you would like to subscribe to see more of that, I would encourage you to do that right now. And with that, at the end of this video, I'm gonna be putting some buttons up. They're called annotations. They're kind of like those square links that you can click. And one of them is gonna be my top interview tour ever that is uh, Lee Blake. Everybody loves it. If you're looking for interview tours, you wanna see Lee Blake. He, he, uh, it's uh, about as professional and knock your socks off grade as it gets and then i'll also put a link into tamra's final reveal where we all pulled together and crowdfunded a five window school bus that we gave to her so both of those will be at the end meantime i caught up with steve at schoolie palooza this last year and did a tour of his van that he affectionately calls origami it is a ford transit uh, he did something with his that i have never seen before and i kind of dig it thought you might dig it too let's take a look what's happening man hey thanks for having me well thanks for coming out yeah good to see you it's like almost the same place i saw you last yeah yeah here we are in the warm weather well it while well, time this is being filmed everybody's in the snow i know i left the snow yeah definitely even oklahoma's in the snow where i left so how long you been doing this uh, a little more than a year now yeah we're gonna get to this unique build that you have, but let's first learn a little bit about you. What was your inspiration that took you from being a electrical engineer with a degree in that field? Photonics, yeah, as a, I have a PhD in photonics and yeah, my undergrad was electrical engineering. And at some point I imagine you used that degree to be employed with a company? Yeah, yeah, For the, I've been a laser engineer for the last 20 years. Uh, you know, I started off working as a regular electrical engineer, but got into lasers pretty quickly in grad school. And what did you uh, start when you were like 17 or something? You don't look that old. <laughs> well, I started working, you know, I put myself through college, you know, so uh, I got a job uh, my second year in college working as an engineering technician. So then I was working on a small production line and kind of just moved up through, you know, really kind of R&D and manufacturing is kind of, you know, my background. So you were fully in, ensconced in the conventional lifestyle you had a, a house, apartment, whatever. Sticks and bricks house on an acre, you know, up uh, in southern New Hampshire. It was beautiful, you know, it was my ideal place. Uh, you could have Chinese food delivered and uh, I had turkeys and bear that would come through my yard, so. And now here we are in a van that you're traveling around in. Right. What was the, the mental process? Just walk us through, how did you go from that life to where, how we see you now? What, what uh, inspired you to live on the road, live the traveling lifestyle, live out of a vehicle. It's a little bit of a long story, right? But, uh, so I don't know if you can see my scars, but uh, I was in a very bad motorcycle accident uh, a little over 20 years ago. Um, I was ejected from the motorcycle into a bunch of poles. And 
uh, it hurt me really badly, but it was one of it was those injuries that you can't really see, right? Plus, I was 23 years old, so you can take a lot of damage. Um, so while I I finished up uh, undergrad grad school actually then, um, and uh, you know I got worse and worse throughout my life as I as I moved up to New Hampshire and developed my career and everything, my pain was increasing, and. Uh, Eventually, I ended up on, on fentanyl and in a, a level of pain that I just couldn't, I really couldn't function anymore. I was, uh, you know, when you just work in a clean room or, or sitting at a desk, it's kind of hard to say, you know what, I, I need to be disabled. You know, I, I couldn't, I mean, people recommended it, my pain clinic and everything, but uh, 30 years old and going to be disabled whenever I just sit at a desk and write code. Um, so I stayed with it. Um, but eventually here, like the last uh, six years, you know, I was in so much pain that something had to change. Um, and really just, you know, trying to find any possible uh, way to do this. And I started uh, remembering back to my rock climbing days, back before I was, you know, basically disabled. Um, people living in vans, you know, and, and spending time climbing. I ran across Alex Honnold, if you know him. He, um, so he's a rock climber that just free soloed El Cap. Uh, a few years ago and he you know I'm like how do you get enough time to practice that and he lived in a van uh, lives in a van so I started uh, you know following you uh, and learning about uh, you know this kind of life and uh, found your van build and started just putting everything together you know hey this would be a good way for me to uh, well so I also I became healed in this time period too that's the sort of that's what makes this story so long I got really bad um, and I hadn't planned on getting better, um, yeah. Uh, but but I found a combination of treatments actually, just in, in desperation, that actually have uh, have healed me and allowed me to move and everything. Uh, where I was like, you know, really scarred in, into place after being injected. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a lot to explain. <laughs> so you lived the conventional lifestyle. Yeah. You were in a motorcycle accident. Uh, that 20 you had, years ago. You had severe injuries that resulted in you being in continuous pain. They just weren't going to heal in a way that was meaningful or durable. I was under continuous pain management, you know, and basically, uh, you know, after a few years, they go, you know, okay, we, you have a spinal cord injury, you know, here's what it looks like, all, all of this, you know, all of my injuries, you're just going to be in pain for the rest of your life. So my thinking is, you know, I've got to endure this pain all this time and just eventually it got to where I could no longer endure it even on any drugs including fentanyl or anything else. Well, why wouldn't you just stay in like an apartment or a or a care facility? What why a vehicle? Why live in a van? Well, somebody's got to pay for it and uh that's me, you know. So, uh I uh and I also had to pay for a divorce and everything else. So, uh you know, you only have so much so much money. I I haven't had any revenue coming in for a while. Um what I'm doing here is, you know, changing my career and uh, looking for a new path that's uh, a lot more uh, productive. You know, before it was all about, when I was living the sticks and bricks, regular life, I was just surviving, you know, and uh, now I've survived. I've made it through this trial, you know, and I'm so much better. I decided all of the travel and everything that I didn't get to do, everything that I missed, you know, I want to go see America. I want to go uh, take the sink that you gave me last time we saw each other and take it 28,000 miles around this country. And uh, that sounds expensive. This van <laughs> looks expensive. It's not. Yeah. It's not as. Uh, no. It's cheaper than living in uh, in a house. That's a good question. You know, why why did I buy a new van and all that sort of thing? It's it's kind of wrapped up. That decision was kind of made whenever I was still married. I needed to move some stuff like our, our house from from New Hampshire uh, down to uh, Oklahoma, and um, you know I had by watching you know a lot of your shows and other people you know just following the van life thing, kind of started putting in my head you know how I would how I would actually do it. You know we sold the sticks and bricks house. I wanted to have something that had you know, warranty and didn't, you know, doesn't need to be messed with. And I could, I needed to figure out how to live. You know, I needed to figure out how to outfit this van in a way that, uh, because I, when I came on the road, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't as healthy as I am now. I couldn't really lift anything then. I was really, in fact, um, I started out with six gallon water jugs and I would pick it, pick one up and I couldn't carry it. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be a real problem for van life. This is just last uh, November, you know, but uh, now I can kind of throw them around. It's no problem. Okay, um, good. So it's been, yeah, it, I mean, 
not not to run this into the Feel, ground, but yeah. just so I understand, <laughs> let me repeat back to you what I think yeah. you're saying. Sure. Living in a vehicle may have some upfront cost in buying it and building it out with uh, solar and power and uh, all of the thing, the amenities you need to be comfortable. But uh, the ongoing cost of living a conventional lifestyle with the mortgage or rent and then the power bill every month and the insurance on the vehicle or on the house mm -hmm. and on a vehicle because you still have a car if you live in a house. So you're paying insurance on both. Yeah. I mean, there's just all these ancillary expenses when you're not living on what do you just live on public land? You um, yeah, or you know, a lot of a lot of my traveling, uh, I've been using time to go around and, and connect with people that you know, because I you know lived all over the country and connect with people that uh, that I haven't seen in a while, you know, friends and family, um, and also you know, kind of exploring my recovery and hoping to uh, to spread it with uh, people that are interested in it. You know, how are you spreading your recovery story? Uh, so I started a podcast. Uh, <clears throat> My van's called Origami because it, everything folds up on it, and uh, the podcast is called the Origami Vancast. I just uploaded the sixth episode today, um, and it's supposed to be, you know, a resource for the chronic pain patient mostly, um, uh, and really talk about fascia and uh, marijuana. Right now, it's to or medical marijuana, um, and right now it's it's mainly my personal experience as I uh, introduce myself and try and uh, get some more guests. So if folks are watching and they want to learn more about that. Maybe they've got chronic pain and you know, you're just basically sharing your, your journey. Right. And there might be some things that resonate with them and even some pathways to healing that you found successful that they might find successful too. And at least you could, they could identify with um, the fact that they're not alone. Yeah. I mean, that's really, you know, I wanted to bring, uh, I, I had zero hope. I had no hope whatsoever. And, uh, so it comes uh, with depression. It's not just pain. PTSD, pain, depression. Um, yeah, it's common, you know, and I think there's a lot of people out there uh, that are in pain, you know, and uh, don't know how to address it. So hopefully, you know, just get people, you know, you kind of get stuck, right? And you, you think that, uh, okay, I have a spinal cord injury. I'm in this pain. I'm going to be in this pain forever, and there's no hope. And then you get put on fentanyl, and then... Then you really have no hope because now the fentanyl doesn't take care of the pain. You need more and more. You're all messed up on this stuff. You can't hardly function, and you're still in pain. That's no way to live. It's a bad spiral. Yeah, and uh, you know it only it only goes the one way. But you pulled out of it. I pulled out of it. I got and I got. You know I'm so much better. My quality of life is so much higher. I've seen you know in the last year, um, and I really you know I credit uh, you and the van build and everything for getting me, uh, for helping to get me started back in that. You know Thanks. I mean really and for you know, kind of showing me what the life can be. And I remember you didn't even have your solar panels on when we first met. No. You had kind of just gotten the van or at least hadn't built it out to the degree that it is now. I just, I rolled the insulation in just right over there across that wash, you know, this insulation that's in it. Yeah. Um, just, uh, we, I didn't pick up on, on what you said about the utilities and everything, but just to touch back base on that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're right. The recurring charges that you would normally get with, uh, with utilities and everything. Yeah. My electric system costs, what uh you know maybe a little bit under two grand with batteries and it with brand new agm batteries and stuff i have three um but you don't have to pay it again and you know you're just sitting there every day you wake up in the morning and your batteries are half filled and at the end of the day they're full you know that's great independence financial independence in little ways and it's a big uh burden off your mind which also helps you feel better when you don't always have these like little financial wolves at the door just wanting to take a little bite. Hey man, just to address this uh, bill today, yeah. just address this new bill today. And by the way, you're up for renewal on your insurance. It just never ends. Yeah, the simplicity of the lifestyle is, is, uh, is really attractive, isn't it? You know, I mean, I think I watched one of your videos and, and it, it kind of hit home for me. I think the words that you used were, you know, generating the revenue to support all of this stuff. And I really kind of identified that, you know, one day I came home and I looked at my house. I was just, you know, a hard Friday where I was in a lot of pain and I had suffered. And, you know, these 13 hour days have been driving. So I drive the same now. I drove the same last year, 28,000 miles as I did every year in my commute. Um, but you come home and, and look and you're like, okay, I got this big fenced in backyard. It needs a new fence. That's $25,000. All I ever get to do is see that fence in the dark. You know, there's a dog that runs around out there that, you know, but I never play with it so just 
yeah. I can dig it. I, I used to feel like when I had jobs, yeah. like 40 hour a week clock in jobs, that when I got home, I was just kind of on work release, like yeah. temporary work release. Cause you got to turn around and go back. You only have so many hours to be awake yeah. and then you're asleep. So you're unconscious. And then uh, you got to go back to work. So it's almost like you just live this job. Yeah. But you get work release to go home, make yourself something to eat, drink a few beers. Get well, your I got to travel down. on the weekend. You know, I got to get in a plane and fly out, you know, Boston to L.A. or whatever, you know. Um, it's funny. My, my dad was a was a uh, truck driver in the last, you know, many years of his life. And uh, I would go out with them for a few weeks at a time. And, you know, you live on the road. It's a little different than what we do. But yeah, uh, I swore that I would never be nomadic or live that kind of traveling life. Um, and I... I, know, I got some pictures uh, from Mount Rainier and, and some other places. I don't know if I've shown you where I've been with this. Situation. But you're on your own time frame. When you're yeah. driving a truck, you, you're, you know, if you want to keep making money, you got to keep driving. And I do want to say, yeah. since we're having this conversation, I have mentioned on my channel before that I never advocate that anybody live the traveling lifestyle. I always advocate that people do what makes them happy. Yeah. And if you want to have a job that has a nice uh, severance package and some company stock and, you know, maybe a, a pass to the golf course and all that stuff and you dig that and you and you got a Mercedes or even that's a high end, even anywhere down below that. If you're just a welder and you're like, man, I really dig welding, just be happy. And yeah. for me, I wasn't happy doing that stuff. I had my own businesses for the most part, yeah. but it wasn't for me. I, you know, I felt, I, I think I felt like this is the way that's going to make me happy. You know, like I went to school all this time and uh, always from the time when I was young, you know, I wanted to be an inventor and an engineer. So then, then when you get there, you're like, okay, well, surely I can work this situation to where it's going to make me happy, you know? And then, so, all right, I didn't want to make military gear anymore. And then the next thing you know, I, you know, you go to work for a telecommunications company where I worked. Next thing you know, I'm building a nuclear weapon. I don't want to work on that stuff. And That's you not can't gonna just make say, me happy. Yeah, you can't just say, well, I don't, I'll pass on that one. What else you got? Yeah, right. You can't just say, oh, I, I don't want to do that part of my job. Actually, I mean, you can. I did eventually. But, <laughs> but then, I, you know, I, was, I left. But, right. Uh, so if people wanted to uh, hear your podcast, connect with you that way, how would they go about finding it? Uh, so it, it's not up on iTunes yet. Still have a problem with uh, with one of my devices. But it's on, uh, you know, Stitcher, Amazon Music, uh and also directly origamivancast.castos.com. Um, and then my email is cbgfenix at gmail.com, cbgphoenix. Um, if yeah, people I'm, wanted to email you for what? just I, I would love to connect with, with people uh, that are, uh, you know, that have recovered using from serious stuff, uh, using medical cannabis, and, and also... Uh, people that are uh, discovering uh, things of the endocannabinoid system. Uh, so I'm, I'm geeky about it, right? I'm really, I'm kind of looking for guests and for information. So you're set up um, to do a remote guest and maybe if somebody wanted to tell their story, even anonymously, they could email you? Sure, yeah. I will generally speaking, try to keep my videos to about 10, 12 minutes in most cases. And uh, the conversation we were having I thought it was so good it was warranted for it to run long, but we were just about to get into the actual tour of the van and I felt like it was a good place to go ahead and use as a stopping point and then resume the tour in another video. So this is where we leave it on this round. Stay tuned because I will uh, upload the actual tour of Steve's rig in the next video. If you're a patron, you can go and watch that video now. I, I schedule them for release on Saturdays at four o'clock. So that's where the balance of that'll be. If you're a patron, it's there right now. In the meantime, here are the two videos I was talking about where we get right into the meat and potatoes with Lee Blake. We give his tour and with Tamara's final reveal where we crowdfund her five window bus and there's a lot of videos, there's a whole big playlist on her, but the final reveal video is right here for your review. Thanks for watching. See you on the next upload.